This is an extra video associated with uh, Poisson regression and negative binomial. Uh, for some of you, this kind of regression methods can be useful given certain context. And I'm just going to briefly go over these slides. All right, so for reference, particularly for Poisson regression, I think this particular uh, reference is uh, one of the uh, good tutorials for Poisson regression um, and I think um, if you have time after this video take a look at this uh, particular tutorial uh, this is actually very interesting and one of the data set they have used I'm just going to briefly talk about the data set in this video so what what is uh, Poisson regression and when when are we going to use this Poisson regression? Poisson regression is uh, something that we generally use when our outcome variable is a count variable. What is a count variable? That can be a discrete uh, values that is taken by this um, variable. So what can be the discrete values? Uh, 0, 1, 2, um, and say for example it could be number of events that are occurring so there cannot be um, number of negative e events that can be occurring so starting from zero to uh, zero plus uh, such as one two three four uh, can be some realistic numbers for a particular variable and even if um, this is zero one two three four type of variable why don't we simply use the multiple linear regression because uh, in the multiple linear regression that talks about continuous outcome. Uh, so the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 kind of seems like a continuous outcome, right? So here, two things we need to understand. The, and, and, and that is associated with the assumptions related to the multiple linear regression. The first assumption is residuals need to be normally distributed. Homocedasticity is a requirement. And the last assumption is that residuals need to be independent. For the count outcome such as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 type of um, values in a variable, uh, the first two assumptions will be violated. Uh, this um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 type of observation on the count data uh, may not be normally distributed and heteroselasticity is a problem that we will see a bit later by an example. So obviously if these two assumptions are going to be violated, we need to look for something more appropriate. All right, so remember when we were talking about the logistic regression, logistic regression is basically a generalized version of the regression that we do, uh, where the error structure um, and the dependent variable is somewhat different, remember? So in, in, the, in the logistic regression, the same ideas that we use in a logistic regression we can even extend it even further that logistic regression work with only binary variable. Uh, then we can extend this um, logistic regression to ordered categorical variable, count variable, time to failure or success uh, variable. And these type of analysis will fall under a bigger umbrella. We generally call them generalized linear model and this Poisson regression that we are going to talk about is one of the members of this generalized linear model. So um, generalized, generalized regression model has two major modifications um, that is done on the um, multiple linear regression. The first thing is that it allows transformation of the predicted outcome. Um, so that uh, we can linearize the potentially non-linear relationship between y and x. So uh, what we are doing here is that if the relationship between x and y are non-linear in some sense, then we try to find a function of y uh, so that we can uh, regain that linear relationship between x and a function of y. And these functions are generally known as the link function and for Poisson regression we use such a link function remember in the um, logistic regression we were using a link function of logit uh, for Poisson regression we are going to use a link function of natural log or log e or ln uh, 
in the link function. Um, and the second uh, modification that GLM makes is that um, it allows um, deviating from normal uh, distribution error structure. So say for example, for uh, Poisson regression, it will, this uh, error um, distribution will follow a Poisson distribution. So the residuals that you will see from Poisson regression uh, should follow a Poisson uh, distribution. And in terms of this GLM uh, family, there are many different uh, regressions that are um, available within this family and this Poisson regression is just one in that family and the link uh, link function for Poisson is going to be uh, log. All right, so in terms of the parameters, remember in the normal distribution we have two parameters. One is the mean mu and the standard deviation sigma. For Poisson uh, distribution, if you remember from your SP page 400 course uh, that you have one parameter only mu and this mu parameter is going to represent not only the mean but also the variance of the distribution right remember this is variance not uh, standard deviation all right so what does a portion uh, distribution look like so portion is a discrete distribution of course and that uh, can take any values that are non-negative and of course it has to be integers so it starts from zero and then it can go up. Generally, most of the numbers be, uh, remain in the lower uh, counts and above there might be less and less observations. So generally speaking, a Poisson distribution might look like this, but it kind of depends on what mean we are talking about. So this is a Poisson distribution with mean one. This is a Poisson distribution with mean 2.5 by mean I'm talking about the parameter right and this is the mean of uh, 5 and this is the mean of 10 so already you can see uh, by the mean of 10 it kind of looks like a normal distribution so if you have a larger mean that uh, expected value from the Poisson distribution um, can lead to a normal distribution when uh, we are comparing in terms of shape and symmetry right so the approximation uh, can be normal at that stage uh, when the mean is uh, say more than 10. all right so in terms of the logistic regression remember when we were fitting our logistic regression uh, on the right hand side we had a linear uh, type of um, formula where we have this uh, intercept plus slope multiplied by x1 plus uh, second slope multiplied by x2 and so on but on the left hand side we have something um, which is a function of y but it is not directly y and what is that function that function was logit so we generally call this logistic regression linear in logit similarly for Poisson regression we have a similar structure um, that we have all of the excess in the additive term uh, multiplied by the slopes and added by a uh, intercept and then we have our y which is transformed um, and in this case the transformation is the logarithm remember so this we call linear in logarithm all right and remember what were, what was the other assumption the residual that we get out of this regression will follow a Poisson regression. All right, so how do we really interpret this? The interpret is very similar to the continuous regression. Um, so if you are trying to interpret a slope, it will be a one unit change in uh, the covariate on the outcome. All right, so in this slide we are talking about a data set um, and this data set is coming from the reference that i have uh, shown at the beginning of this video and in this uh, the outcome is number of alcoholic drinks uh, that an individual consumes on one particular saturday night during the study and we have also another variable sensation um, and this means that an eight item subscale of sensation seeking or excitement seeking behavior 
potentially ranging from 1 to 7. So this um, sensation scale uh, is a 8 item subscale uh, where the values can be uh, from uh, 1 to 7. So all of these values you see here is between 1 to 7. And of course you have a gender variable 0 equal to female and 1 equal to male and you also have this y variable which is the number of alcoholic drinks right all right so in this if you are um, doing a summary of this data you can see the mean is uh, three and the standard deviation is also three but remember what was the assumption the assumption of the um, portion is that the same parameter mu represents not only the mean but also the variance right but if we calculate the variance the variance is close to 10 but the mean is close to 3 so obviously this is not really going to be working for us uh, so for now let us just fit uh, the Poisson um, regression anyway and later we will show how to fix this problem where the mean and the variance are different Alright, so let's go ahead with the linear regression first to show what is the impact when we try to fit a linear regression where our dependent variable is basically a count variable. And we can see some sort of heterocity in here. How do I say heterocity? Because I am seeing a pattern when I'm uh, plotting the uh, regression uh, standardized residual um, with respect to the predicted values. So if we see some pattern like this, we generally mean that there, there can be some sort of heterogeneity in here. And then um, we fit a portion fit because obviously this multiple linear regression is not going to work. And how do we really um, interpret our slope? The interpretation is again very similar to the way we do interpretation in our linear regression. We basically assume that the x is equal to 0. What is our x? x was the sensation seeking behavior. And what is our um, beta coefficient? The beta coefficient was minus 0.14. Uh, so the uh, relative risk that we are going to estimate here is going to be the exponentiation of that. All right, so what is the interpretation for the uh, sens sensation seeking behaviors uh, slope. Uh, so if we want to calculate the risk ratio, we simply have to exponentiate that um, and that will give us the value of 1.26, which is going to be the predictive multiplicative effect of a one unit change in sensation, uh, sensation seeking on the number of alcoholic uh, drinks consumed and based on this regression if we are trying to um, predict the number of alcoholic drinks we are just going to uh, exponentiate the intercept and then we are going to e exponentiate the um, slope and we are going to just multiply them to get the uh, predicted number of uh, alcoholic drinks all right so to check the model fit, we are going to use the R square deviance, and this R square deviance is uh, somewhat different than the R square that you see for the linear regression. All right, so portion distribution has one parameter, and it is supposed to have the mean and variance equal. If the mean and variance are equal, then we call it equidispersion. If the variance is larger than the mean we call it over dispersion in our case remember our variance was 10 and our mean was 3 so we had a case of over dispersion so how do we really deal with this over dispersion then um, there is a solution which is known as the over dispersed Poisson regression fit and in this over dispersed Poisson regression fit we make a modification and what is that modification we add a second parameter we add a uh, dispersion parameter and what how, how do we really interpret that dispersion parameter uh, so we are basically using this um, parameter to represent our over dispersion and if this parameter is greater than one 
we call it over dispersion if this parameter is equal to one we call it equidispersion and if this parameter is less than one we call it under dispersion so one alternative the second alternative that we have is the negative binomial which already has two parameters one parameter is to represent the over dispersion but the scale is different um, remember in here when we were doing dealing with over dispersed portion regression this parameter was the null value was one right but in this case when we are dealing with negative binomial the null value is zero everything else is the same the interpretation is the same is just the null value is zero what is the null value <laughs> the null value is equidispersion and how do we interpret the interpretation of this negative binomial model is uh, exactly the same as the standard portion model all right so here is an example where we are basically fitting a over dispersed negative uh, binomial fit we do not call it over dispersed because the over dispersion is a part of the negative binomial already so in here you will see for sensation it will have a slope but it will have additional parameter which is known as the uh, scale parameter and in this scale you will see the beta coefficient is 0 0.7722 right and in here um, we can see since the scale is greater than zero that means this is a over dispersion um, model and this actually fits our narrative of the data remember our variance was 10 and mean was 3 so it was over dispersed situation and when we are estimating this we are getting um, the scale greater than 0 that means this is again a over dispersed data let us take a look at the different fits this is the multiple linear regression fit this is the regular portion fit this is the over dispersion fit and this is oh, sorry over dispersed portion fit and this is the negative binomial in the portion over dispersed portion and the negative binomial uh, the sensation seeking scale uh, seeking behaviors uh, slope was very similar the standard errors you can see the portion regression standard error was not correct uh, and both of these uh, standard errors are uh, agreeing with each other um, and in here there is no scale and for portion regression there, there is no scale the scale is basically one and the uh, alpha is basically zero for over dispersion when you are adding the scale uh, remember the parameter we were talking about where the null value or the equidistant uh, equidispersion value was one um, and two means that we are we have a over dispersed data and similarly in the negative binomial we have a different uh, parameter it is not scale anymore it is alpha and in here our alpha is greater than zero that means that we have a over dispersed model so the summary is that if you have a count data try to use the portion regression but if you feel like there is over dispersion that is going on in the data try to use the negative binomial regression which is can be considered as a generalization of the portion regression thank you